All right, well, welcome everybody and thanks for attending today's webinar, Understanding Top Technology Trends for 2023. My name is Grace Devine and I'll be moderating for today's presentation. We're going to go ahead and get started in just a second. First, I'd like to say we're very excited to have Phil Arsenault with us as today's presenter. Phil is the Field Service Solutions Product Manager at AssetWorks and has worked with Fleet Asset Tracking Technolo Technology for many years. Before I pass things over to Phil, I just want to give everybody a quick heads up. The microphones have been muted, so if any of you have any questions at any time during the presentation, you can use the WebEx chat tool. You should all see the chat icon located on your screen, and this acts as an instant messaging tool. Please feel free to use the WebEx chat tool to enter any questions during the presentation. Make sure you send them to host, and I'll be happy to relay them to Phil at the conclusion of the presentation for a brief Q&A session. So with that said, I think we're ready to get started here, Phil. I can see your screen and you are good to start. Perfect. So thanks everybody for joining. Um, it's great to see so many of you were able to make it on the, uh, the rescheduled session. Um, so I'll be talking a little bit today again about the top GPS trends in technology. Um, I've been designing and deploying GPS systems for almost 25 years. So I've seen a lot of different things come and go. Um, I'm going to focus on a few of them today and just talk through, a, um, I'll bring some up as we go through the system. What I'll be doing today is I'll be talking a little bit initially, a few slides, and then I'll get into a demo. And what I'll be demoing today is the actual AssetWorks GPS product. So you may have purchased the GPS system through AssetWorks, um, but it might be a third party at this stage. But this is um, what I'm going to be showing is AssetWorks in-house GPS system. So we'll get into this right now. So before I go too far, I mean, driver behavior was on that list. It's one of the things we want to talk about is becoming more and more important these, these days. But I feel I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the primary reason for driver behavior out of the gate a little bit. And that's, of course, safety. So I went and looked on the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration website and seen what they their definition of harsh driving was. So that's an individual commits a combination of moving traffic offenses so as to endanger other persons or property. So that's a pretty clear definition, but then my next question was, well, what are traffic offenses? So I dug a little further and found um, this chart that shows all of the, the behaviors that led to a traffic fatality in 2022. So at the very top here, we have speeding. Um, it's almost twice as high as under the influence, which surprised me a little bit based on the amount of um, airtime that gets, but obviously speeding is a problem. And as I looked into it a little bit more, it, it surprised me how much of a difference five to 10 miles an hour makes. So if, it, if a pedestrian's hit by a car at 20 miles an hour, they'll be injured, but will typically survive. If they're hit at 25 to 30 miles an hour, typically they won't survive an incident like that. So it makes a really big difference as far as speeding goes, not just at the top end of speeding down the highway or something like that, but also at the slower speeds. So one of the, one of the big trends in GPS today, and that I've noticed over the years is initially people wanted to know who was speeding so they could call them out directly and say, you're speeding, here's what needs to change. And what's been changing more and more now is they don't want to go directly to individuals. They want to fix things as a team. They want to talk to groups, things like that. So as I go through the demo, I'll show you a little bit of how to, uh, how to address those types of concerns without having to go directly to individuals and be the big brother in the room. Um, besides this, I thought I would quickly mention AI cameras. So adding AI, AI cameras to a GPS system like ours actually gets you to tracking 33% of the behavior that causes fatal, fatal accidents. So if any of you plan on coming to our AssetWorks Academy this um, spring in Louisville, I'll be there. And if you have any other questions about AI cameras, which definitely could be a webinar of its own, I can walk you through and show you exactly what we have on the AI camera front. So from there, we'll get right into the demo. So the first thing that a user is going to do is they're going to log in to the AssetWorks GPS website, and they'll be presented with a map. It'll be zoomed out so that they can see all the vehicles they have access to. Now, another thing that, that I've seen over the years is people want to capture more and more and more data, while at the same time only seeing what's important to them. So to address the what's important to them, we came up with map filters here along the top. And users can filter down to just what they're looking for. So you can filter down the divisions or departments, possibly in the, in the case of your uh, 
of your business and filter down to see just vehicles and employees from the division you're interested in. You could also look at things like asset types. You could say, oh, I only want to see heavy duty or light duty. Oh, I only want to see my, my pole trucks, whatever, whatever is relevant to your industry. Next, you could filter on landmarks. So if, let's say I'm a service technician and I just want to see all the vehicles that are currently located in the yard where my shop is, I can say, just show me those vehicles. And again, it'll filter everything down just to that information. Beyond that, you can customize groups as a private group or a public group. And what a group is, is you, you set up a group of assets and or employees. So that way, whenever you log in, you would see all of the assets you're responsible for. Plus you'll see any assets that one of the employees you're responsible for logs into. So even if that's not on your group list, you'll still see all of those vehicles. And last here on the filters, we have um, status filters. So there's things like, is the operator signed on or not? Is the ignition on or not? And then you have things like reporting or moving. So what I might wanna do here is I might just wanna see vehicles that have not moved in the last 31 days. So are these vehicles broken down? Does someone need to look into it? Is someone hoarding these vehicles? Can they be used better somewhere else? It's really easy and quick to just see the vehicles that haven't been moved or used in a period of time. And the last section here is the asset flags. Now, if I hover over any of these, with, as with most things in FSS, it immediately pops up a tool tip telling me what it is. So this would just show me vehicles that currently have an asset trouble light or a trouble indicator on their dash, on or blinking. So that would narrow my, my list down here significantly and all the vehicles I'm seeing on the map. So the next thing I've noticed over time is more and more everyone is very comfortable with their phones and they want everything to work like their phone. So what we've done with FSS is we've gone ahead and we've incorporated Google Maps, which pretty much everyone is familiar with. They know how it works. If I type in Times Square, and do a search in Manhattan. It's gonna show Times Square on the map. I can go to satellite. It's gonna have all the high resolution imaging data that people are used to and that they wanna see because they have it on their phone, right? So what that does is it just makes adoption a little bit quicker because it's a tool that people are already familiar with. Um, in addition, we've enhanced the search capabilities so that things that you add to the system, like let's say a landmark, you can easily do a search and find that landmark here. So I can just go to maintenance and we'll go to maintenance facility and I can do a search and it's gonna jump me right to that maintenance facility right here. So it's a very easy way to jump around if you have different offices, different departments, different divisions, you can jump around the map really quickly using this search tool. Next, we have our list here on the uh, left-hand side. Now this is a list of all the vehicles that I have access to. So I might be an employee in a single department and let's say that would, might, might be parks and rec or waste, I could go in and I would only see those vehicles, only see those operators. Now, in this case, I'm seeing everything. So if I click on a vehicle, I can do that at any time. It basically shows me where that vehicle is on the road. I can zoom out and see exactly where it is on the map. Next, we'll look at a quick history. And I'm just gonna look for a specific vehicle here that I know has some data. And we'll run a quick history. Now, what a quick history is, is it answers the questions that typically come up. What's this person been doing for the last couple hours? So what this shows, turn this back onto this view, it shows what this driver's been doing over the last couple of hours and all the different types of events there's been on the, on the vehicle. Now I'll get in a little bit to the events in a minute, but just to give you an idea, um, I can see here that as they were driving, they started speeding here. And if I click on any of these events, I can see that they were speeding. The speed limit was 45 miles an hour and they were going 54 miles an hour for a total of one minute. So that shows me what goes on there. Now, another question I get all the time is people don't trust the speeding. They don't trust the speed limits as the map data, up to date, things like that. And what we've actually added in is you have the ability to go here. And if I just type limit so I can find my speed limit information, I can see where the starting speed limit was here at 45 miles an hour and the location. If I, if I know that that's incorrect, I can go in here and I can easily change that to 55 miles an hour and from that point on I won't get any any additional speeding violations and then when it comes time and the map gets updated and the map data either matches this or maybe the map data will go to 60 it's a new road and they've slowly been increasing the speed it would then override this and it would then be whatever the map data is showing so it's it's really easy that if you do have a road that's under construction for the summer the speed limits lower something's going on you can easily go in and you can customize the map data to adjust for that
So next we have the vehicle details. I can click here, I can view the, we have full history, which I'll show you a little bit later, but we can go to the view details. And this gives me all the details of a vehicle. So now I can scroll, I can look here, it's showing me the type of vehicle, the plate, the model, fuel levels. Um, it's showing me all of my meters, cabin air temperature, battery voltages, things like that. And down here near the bottom, it's also showing me any of my trouble codes. So if the lamps are on, or there's any trouble codes here, you're gonna see that little icon that I showed you in the status filter next to the vehicle right here. So I know that there's a trouble code being thrown on this vehicle. Now, for most of them, we do decode them, but if there's any custom ones specific to a make model or manufacturer, then we just show it like this with the DTC number, and you should easily be able to look that up for your uh, for vehicles in your fleet. Um, after that, we can go here and we can say find the closest. So if there was an emergency or I, I know that that one of my um, boom trucks is out there, they forgot some tools, I could easily filter down, show me just my boom trucks and find the ones that are closest. So I could say, hey, this guy's over here, drive over, you can get the tool you need and drive back. So it's just a quick way to see what's closest to that specific vehicle. Next we have, oh, we'll search back here for one, two, three, four. We'll do another quick search and we will look to assign an operator. Now, with the type of devices we have, we have either tablets, things like that, where, where people can log in directly in the vehicle or with HID card readers or fobs, things like that. But if not, if a vehicle is just assigned out to an operator, you can easily go here, assign an operator and say, I wanna assign this vehicle to Phil Gustafson and assign it to them. And then once this updates, it will show that it's assigned to, uh, to Phil Gustafson once it, once it updates. So really easy to do things like that. It's also easy that when it comes time to manage devices, in your fleet, you can easily go here, hit manage devices. And let's say that I have to swap out this device. So I'm not gonna go into inventory. I can pick any device I want. Now this would show up on my phone as well as a uh, technician. I can easily go here and look for the available devices if I can type it right. So this shows me all the devices that are available. And I know specifically this vehicle needs one of our ME87s. I can see this is the one that's available. I can click it, hit add. And now that vehicle has been swapped out and this vehicle will now be, I'm sorry, and this device will now be associated with that vehicle. So it's really easy to do. It's available on their phones so that they can do it real time, right from looking at the serial number on the device and get that all sorted out. The last thing we'll show here are um, the meter wizard. Now what comes up a lot is I need the exact dash readings showing up on Fleet Focus. And what ends up happening is, especially with heavy duty vehicles, there's at least three sources of odometer which in a lot of times don't exactly match. So what we've done is we've set up a meter wizard where if I, I'll go into that right now, configure meters, and it basically steps you through all the steps to get your meters correct. Now, if this vehicle is reporting meters right now, it would be showing up here on this, uh, on this screen for me, but obviously this isn't correct. So I'm gonna hit no, I'm not seeing the right meters. To begin, I start my vehicle, let it run for five minutes. Then I would be getting those, those meters in. I'll hit next. This is what's being displayed. It's obviously blank. Is that correct? No. So now I can go ahead and put in my meters, put in my odometer. So what happens from this point is every time that the engine tells us that it's moved ahead by down to a hundredth of a hundredth of a mile, we update this value by a hundredth of a mile so that it always stays in sync. So this will now always match what's on the dash, regardless of what the device is seeing on the ECU. Now, the next thing it'll do, it'll do the same thing for engine hours. First thing it'll ask is, do you have access to engine hours? A lot of light duty vehicles don't have access. So if we hit no here, we could hit finish. And now I'm, I'm assured that this is gonna match the, the dashboard odometer for what I'm seeing in fleet, in fleet focus. And again, this is all available on the, uh, on the driver's phone. So they have easy access to the dash to see it. They can do it right there. The installer can do it, whatever your process is and get the meters right from day one. The last thing I'll show you here is, is uh, I can expand out this sidebar. So if I expand out the sidebar and look at it as a table, it shows up like this. So I have a bunch of columns here, vehicle information, but as with all the tables in FSS, if you go down to the bottom right, you can click here and I can add additional pieces of information. So I can click on, let's say I'm a technician and I wanna see the service odometer and the service hours. Now those are appearing right here for me and they're a part of my table. The other thing I can do is I can say, well, they're, the, one of the most important things for me. So I'm gonna bump these up and show them further along up here in the table. Now what FSS does as well is now from this point on, 
me as a user, it's going to remember exactly how I've set up this table because I've set it up just how I like it. And it's going to look like this for me all the time. And at any point I can go here and I can export whatever, whatever layout, whatever I've filtered here on a column. I mean, if I started typing a vehicle number, it would filter down just to anything with a nine one in it. It's going to filter it down and I can hit the export button and export that out to, uh, to save for later or to look at in, in a different solution. Next, I'm going to talk about history. Um, and this is where we're going to talk a little bit more and give the example of how we would look at maybe speeding data, where back in the day, people would want to pick on individual drivers and say, hey, you're speeding, here's where you sped. Where now, there's privacy concerns, there's all sorts of different reasons, but there, there's better ways to do it as a group and as a team and to improve together. So a general history is what I basically showed you is that quick history. You can set that up and it'll show you all the lines. You can set it up for custom time ranges. You can set it up for multiple vehicles. It'll show up like that. But what I'm gonna focus on here for the demo today is a heat map. So I'm gonna look at a custom range and I'm gonna choose, let's say the last week of data. Now for the event, these are all the different events that you can have included in your history. Um, you can set up notifications for all of these events. They'll show up on the map, things like that. So there's things like, is your device battery low? Is your vehicle battery low? Harsh driving, fuels low. EV state of charge is low. There's a bunch of interface points. Um, there's maintenance, is, the work, or is there work due soon? Safety, is an emergency button been pressed? But what we're gonna look at today specifically, let's look at speed limit violations. Cause that was one of the top ones on that list, right? When we were looking at the reasons for fatalities. So I'm gonna select that. Now I'm not interested in all of these vehicles. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna see my filters. Yeah, I just want these asset types of the heavy and light duty. I'm going to turn on that filter. And that also not only filters what's on my map here, it's now filtered my list down to 45 of the 156 vehicles I have access to. So I'm going to select all of those and I'm going to go ahead and run the heat map. So here's a heat map of all the speed limit violations we've had in our fleet over the last week. Now, here you can look at individual vehicles, see who was speeding, get your information showing up here on the side just like we did on the quick history and see all the violations. But what I'm gonna do, I'm in a safety meeting, I'll minimize this so no one can see which vehicles they are. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit and say, okay guys, what I wanna do for the next two weeks until our next safety meeting next month, whatever it happens to be, I wanna see if we can reduce speeding in this area, which is obviously bad for us and this area. So you can, you can start to address this first as a team and say, let's work together and let's try to address speeding and let's look, look at, well, I'll keep a copy of this. And then in a month's time, let's look and see how we've improved. So as a group, everybody can work together to do this. Now, if there's still problems, you can obviously go back and talk to drivers individually, but as a starting point and to work together as a team and promote that teamwork, you can go ahead and you can just say, let's work on these two areas, bring this right up in your meeting and look at that. And then if, for the, for the call takers out there and everything else, if they get complaints, which everybody does, right? You would zoom into an area, let's say I zoom in here, and someone calls in and says, oh, one of your vehicles sped through my playground. I could go here. I could put on that same custom range. We'll look at the last week. And I could say, well, just show me which vehicles drove through that area, if any, of my vehicles. So this is gonna run. So it looks like eight of my vehicles drove through that area in the last week. Now, if you're looking up a complaint, you're probably gonna have a one hour window or something. They, they drove there between noon and one o'clock, right? And then you can go ahead and do the same thing, select events and run a history to see if any of your vehicles did speed through the playground zone that you got the complaint about. So, that's basically the history. That's, that's the majority of what you can see on the map. And again, with it being Google Maps, I think it's gonna be familiar to everybody. They're gonna get right into it and be able to use, use it fairly quickly. So the next thing I wanna talk about a little bit is the administration of all of this. Um, how do I get this set up? How do I configure all of these vehicles? So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go into settings and I'm gonna look at, at my list of assets. So I'll go ahead and pick on one, two, three, four here again. Now, when you're, when you're initially setting up an asset, if you have Fleet Focus or another third-party tool, you can configure it to automatically populate all your vehicle information on the left-hand side here. Then all that's really required is to assign a device to the vehicle and confirm that the meters, the odometer and the engine hours are correct for that vehicle. Beyond that, we go into operator safety, and this is where you can configure harsh driving, speed thresholds. So you can say, let me know if anyone's driving 
over 85, but just send me a summary of that once a week. But if anyone is speeding over 90, I want a real-time email, I want a real-time text message so I can address that. And then as far as speed limits go, you could say moving uh, more than a percent over the speed limit, or in this case, they have it saying moving more than six miles per hour over the speed limit. So there's lots of configurability there. Uh, you can also configure some maintenance items. So here you could configure if you want to track idling. And again, idling maybe of five minutes is bad, but I just want a summary of that once a week, or I just want to see that in a report. Um, critical idling, though, if a vehicle's been running in my yard for 30 minutes, I want to be notified real time because someone's probably forgot it and it's just sitting there idling. Next, you can you can configure things like low available range. So whether or not it's an internal combustion engine or electric, you can say report when the fuel level is lower than 25% or report when the state of charge is lower than 25%, 15%. I mean, with electric vehicles, it's a lot harder to carry a jerry can over and uh, put some gas in. So this one actually is becoming more important as time goes on. And the last thing I'll talk about here are interfaces. Um, interfaces are, are used to track additional things on your vehicle. So if you had things like beacons on the roof and there's certain times of day or certain situations where let's say that you're expecting drivers to have those beacons on, you can actually set up inputs depending on the type of the device. The device in this vehicle doesn't have any input set up like that, but you could go ahead and you could set up inputs to track that. So you could see when those beacons were turned on, when those beacons were, were turned off. Maybe there's a snow plow, it's driving around, there's a snowstorm, you're expecting the beacons to be on. You can actually get those notifications and see when the beacons are turned on, when the beacons are turned off to make sure that everything's being done safely. So there's there's additional types of inputs for that. And again, this this device doesn't have types of inputs, but again, another trend we're seeing in in um, GPS nowadays is people don't just want to track vehicles, they want to track quads and side-by-sides and light generators and all sorts of things. We've even had one customer interested in tracking garbage bins. So we have a whole, a whole array of different device types for those types of solutions where maybe you need one report a day on a battery powered device and it's going to report in for 10 years before you have to change the battery. You just need to know where that high value asset is. You don't care if it's moving around as much as once a day, you want to make sure you know where it is so it's not lost. So there's a bunch of different types of devices that you can use for that as well. Um, next, I'll talk about reports a little bit. So I won't go into a lot of reports, but this is just an example of, our, of one of our reports, an asset scorecard overview. And these people decided to say, well, show me how many driving penalties per 100 miles. It actually breaks out all the different vehicles into were they speeding, were they idling, whatever types of harsh driving, whatever you would want, you could display that here and show your worst offenders. And then down below the way it's broken out is these would be all your different departments. So you could actually set up a dashboard or report something like this and turn this into a bit of a game, right? So you could say, okay, every month, whichever division or department has the least number of penalties, whatever I consider a penalty, drug, harsh driving, speeding, idling, whatever it is, there's a pizza lunch or something, right? And obviously right now it looks like the Southwest region has this month well in hand. So you can do a bit of gamification there if you want to. All of these reports, every one of these can individually be stored as a dashboard. So you could have this displayed somewhere if you wanted to. And it just updates every, as often as you want, typically about every 15 minutes. So that you have real time data showing how your team is doing with anything like that. So that's just an example of how you can put reports to use in FSS. Now, the next thing I'll talk about a little bit is, um, and that this is becoming more and more and more popular. People want all of their different systems integrated together. So what we've done with FSS is we've built out a very thorough set of APIs so that third-party applications can call these APIs and you don't have to enter data in two places at once or anything like that. So just as an example, Fleet Focus, for example, would call the Asset API. And whenever you add vehicles, remove vehicles, do anything with the vehicles or assets in Fleet Focus, that will automatically populate all of that in FSS for you. So you don't have to touch it. All you have to do is add it in Fleet Focus, and that's automatically getting updated for you in FSS. So that's an example of how that API can be used. Um, Fleet Focus also calls the telematics. 
So it would call these telematics APIs to pull things like the odometer, which you would get updated every minute or every 15 seconds, however often the vehicle's reporting in. It would, it would automatically push that information up into Fleet Focus, the hours, the meters, any DTCs, trouble lights, that would automatically be populating Fleet Focus. And you could set it up so that you could have a service request created automatically based on specific DTCs if that's something that you wanted to do. So there's a lot of different uses for these types of APIs. Um, it's, it's it, like I say, it's becoming more and more popular. We have people that are now creating landmarks or geofences. So they, they might have a GIS department that says, oh, well, we've already geofenced all of our yards, all of our facilities, all of our client sites, whatever that may be. Now they can easily just push that into FSS. That becomes available on the map search so that all of that information, again, you don't have to re-add that to FSS. All of that may, is maintained, the system of record in your GIS department. So that could be employees, that could be anything like that. Maybe you have an HR system that manages employees. So, and we'll work with your team to do any integrations and help you do integrations to any of the data that's available in FSS. So the last thing I wanna show is, I mentioned that all of this was available on the phone. So if I swipe to the side here, this is just running on my iPhone. Um, so this is basically when you log in, you see this map list right here. So this is what someone would see when they first log in. It's gonna be very similar to what they saw. This is that, that column on the left-hand side. If I go ahead and turn my phone sideways, it immediately brings me to my map view. So if I just wanna jump back and forth quickly, I can just turn my phone sideways, it jumps to that. I can bring it back landscape, it, it brings it back to here. I have all the same filtering capability on this application. And again, I can go here, I can say configure meters. Here's the meters, I can say, no, that's not correct. And I can walk through my meter wizard configuration. So everything that someone would typically need if they wanna run a history of a vehicle, um, we can go back here and do that as well, just to have a quick look. We will run it on this vehicle, I think was the one, yeah. Run a quick history. And again, it's gonna show that to me on the map. Now I might be a supervisor and I just wanna see where a vehicle is on the map. Again, really easy. I can just click on any of these vehicles it's gonna jump me right to that vehicle. I'm gonna see where it is on the map so then I can go and track that vehicle down if I have to talk to the operator, things like that. So it's really powerful to have this work on any phone. It's not an application you have to install. So users can use it on their own cell phone if they want to, or on any of the phones that you provide. Same username and password that they would use in FSS, but all the power that they have in FSS, they now have right on their phone and they can use. Because again, another, another trend. People are working more in the field, working remotely, working on the go than they ever have before. And it's just a given nowadays that your GPS system has to move with you and you have to be able to access all of this information on your, uh, on your mobile device. So that was really fast. I talked about a lot of things uh, as we went through here. Um, as, as a summary, I mean, GPS technology is more and more important than it ever has been for fleets. I mean, the days of manually tracking this type of information, they're long behind us now. I mean, auto, auto tracking and highlighting just the exceptions so that users are just seeing what they're interested in is more important than ever. And it's, it's gonna be what, what helps you have a smooth operating fleet, the smooth operating fleet that you want. So with that, I think we'll, uh, we can open it up to any questions that anybody has. Um, we'll see where we're at with that. Yes, thank you, Phil. So yeah, we're gonna open up for questions now. Just a reminder, if you have any questions at this time, please send them to host under the WebEx chat tool on your screen. And provided that we have enough time, I'll pass your question to Phil, and we'll be happy to give you an answer. So to start off our first question, Phil, does your GPS system work with fuel focus? Yeah, absolutely. So, and actually what, what we plan on, on releasing as, at, as part of our academy this year is we're gonna have the ability to install the AssetWorks GPS devices into, into your vehicle and it will take care of fuel and telematics and GPS and everything. So you'll have a single device installed, you'll have a single data plan that you have to worry about and it will do all of those things. It will be responsible for secure fueling 
and you won't have to worry about having installing multiple devices. How do I connect them? Where do I install them? It'll just be one device and you'll be able to manage your fuel, get all the information you want in fuel for tracking and get your telematics and GPS data. Great, thank you. And the next one, can the heat map be used for other things than speeding? Yes. So speeding was the one I gave the example of. I mean, it's, it's kind of where we started our whole discussion today, but you can use it for anything you want. I mean, what I've seen some people do is they'll use it on harsh turning. And what they end up seeing is there might be specific off ramps or intersections, places in the city or in their general service area where people are consistently taking that a little bit too fast. So they can easily say, hey, again, as a team, let's not pick on anybody here. As a team, let's work on this intersection and see what's going on. Another thing that I've seen sales types organizations do is you can do a heat map of all the locations where all of your sales vehicles have been in your service area. So you can get a really quick idea of, are we hitting all the areas? Are we missing some areas? Do we need to redirect some people to an area that's being neglected, things like that. So you can use heat map for any of those events that you saw on that list. Okay, and is there a limit to the number of integrations AssetWorks GPS can handle? No, so any number of third party applications can use the any of those APIs that I showed. So, I mean, even if you do have Fleet Focus connected and it's using the assets integration, it's using the telematics integration or the employees integration, you can have other third party softwares pull information there as well. Because you might have a third party piece of software that's just interested in just the odometer from an asset or something like that. And you could pull just the odometer and list from that API, even though Fleet Focus is using it to manage all of the vehicles and all of the information. Okay. Well, that looks like all the questions we have today. I'd like to thank you all again for attending today's presentation. Hopefully you've all secured some valuable takeaways to keep in mind moving forward. Bill, I also like to thank you on behalf of AssetWorks once again for sharing your expertise with everyone today. As you see, Phil and Mike's contact information is available here. Should any of you have any questions you'd like to follow up with, I hope you all have a great day and we look forward to having you with us next time. Thanks, everybody.